In today's lecture, we're going to talk about the great forgotten genre in American comics, the romance comic. People tend not to remember that it was a big deal, but it was, and for quite some time. Now, there's lots of romance angles in other stories. Think Clark Kent and Lois Lane. But what makes a romance comic a romance comic instead of a comic with romance in it? Well, in romance comics, romantic love is not just incidental or part of the plot, it is the central theme. Everything revolves around the romance. Romance comics were in fact wildly popular from its inception in comic books in 1947 through the 1960s. They largely fell out of favor by the 1970s. We'll think about why at the end of the video. Unlike superhero comics, which would follow one character over their many plots, Romance comics tended to focus on one character for one story, so most of the books would be anthology-style books with short episodic stories following one pairing or one romance for eight to ten pages and then moving on to another romance or another pairing. We didn't see the same character twice very often. Now, romance comics might come from a slightly surprising source. Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. Yes, the same Jack Kirby and Joe Simon who created Captain America. The very first romance comic book was Young Romance, and it was created by Simon and Kirby in 1947. So why did Simon and Kirby decide to create a romance comic when they had been better known for action comics, and particularly for superhero books? Well, they had just gotten back from the war. And during his deployment, Joe Simon noticed that a lot of adults were reading comic books, and particularly reading comic books that, well, when he had been writing them, he had meant them for kids. So he thought there should be a comic book meant for adults. And what he thought was, romance had been the only thing that wasn't done yet. And it was a genre that adults cared about. So he and Kirby got to it, and young romance was born. Now, a lot of romance comics tend toward a confessional mode. So they mimic true stories told in the first person. This really happened to me. I was a teenage drama queen, etc., etc. You'll see this in the comics that we read. Interestingly, it's not just Kirby and Simon. Many artists better known for their work in other genres worked prolifically in the romance genre, and some even claimed it was their favorite. For example, of course, Jack Kirby, who I've mentioned, who actually created romance comics. Frank Frazetta, best known for his heavy metal style posters and also his work in EC fantasy comics. Alex Toth. John Romita Sr., very famous Spider-Man artist from the Silver Age. Loved drawing romance comics. Wally Wood, who we'll be reading when we read about EC comics and is best known for his sci-fi comics, got his start in romance. Now, for many of you, this might be your first time reading romance comics, but you've definitely seen them before. And how do I know this? Well, because of Roy Lichtenstein. So Roy Lichtenstein's comic-style paintings are actually mostly derived from actual comic panels. And a lot of the most famous ones are actually taken from romance comics, and particularly the romance comics of an artist named Tony Abruzzo. I'll show you a couple right now. For example, Drowning Girl is this panel from Run for Love from the comic Secret Hearts in 1962. He used this story again for Helpless in 1963. This time, at least he changed the hair color. In the Car, 1963, came from Girls Romance number 78 from 1961. Might be worth knowing that and in the car sold at auction not too long ago, it sold for $16.2 million. Suffice it to say, Tony Abruzzo never made quite so much money. For this reason, a lot of people in the comics industry have a really complicated relationship with Roy Lichtenstein. On the one hand, his work elevates comic-style art to high art. On the other hand, he does it by ripping off other artists who never get quite the same recognition. So this begs the question... If romance comics were beloved by comics artists well-known in other genres, and even influenced artists outside of comics, what happened? How did they get forgotten? Well, it's complicated. 
So some folks blame TV, soap operas, and girls and teen magazines, but a lot of these were also available in the 50s and 60s when romance comics were still pretty popular. Others point to the stringent requirements of the Comics Code. Again, we'll talk about this in more detail, but Comics Code had regulations requiring books to uphold family values and show respect for parents. And that stuff can be kind of hard in romantic dramas. Still others point towards corporate mandates. Well, they found that, yes, romance comics were popular, but they weren't as popular as the superhero comics. So many publishers decided to focus on male young adult fans at the expense of their female fans. I'm honest, I also think it's a bit of cultural misogyny. We tend to devalue forms of popular culture that are particularly embraced by women. Think chick flicks versus action flicks. They're both kind of dumb, but we tend to make fun of one a lot more than we make fun of the other. So sure, romance comics are unrealistic and silly, but so are superhero comics. You don't quite see the same resistance to superheroes as you do to romance. But the romance isn't dead. Some folks are trying to rekindle it. So of course, as you probably know, the romance genre died in American comics, but remained popular in other traditions. We have quote-unquote chick lit, we have soap operas, and romantic comedies, for example. Therefore, the interest in romance as a genre has continued. And as more and more women are being involved in the comic industry once again, there's been a return to romance as a genre in comics. Some independent artists and titles, like Love and Rockets or Strangers in Paradise, focus very seriously on relationships, and these have been retrospectively called romance comics, even though they didn't really consider themselves that at the time. Several scholars and many artists are beginning to focus on the romance genre again, bringing it back to the attention of fans. And we have new anthologies of romance stories like Fresh Romance, Speculative Relationships, Love Machine, as well as several other titles, bringing back the romance genre to a new generation. You probably noticed the comics code got mentioned again. Well, next time we're finally going to talk about it in more detail. Talk about the establishment of the Comics Code Authority, Frederick Wortham, and EC Comics. See you then.